thank you for joining. Remember to hit that thumbs up button below. Your support really makes a difference. It helps us reach more people who can also benefit from the messages shared. We hope you enjoy. Hello and welcome to Real Relationship Talk, the podcast hosted by yours truly, Teresha Young, Relationship Master Coach, where we have open, non-judgmental, heart-to-heart conversations about love, self-love, self-care, dating and relationships. And for this episode and to wrap up season six, I am being joined and we are being joined by the wonderful, delightful Kalindi Jordan and Pete Warnock. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for inviting us to share. Oh, you're so welcome. I'm really excited because we're going to be delving into the topics of love, intimacy, sexuality, and we're going to really explore that. It's the first time that we're going to really explore that conversation in the depth, I think, that we're going to go to today. So before we delve into it, I'm just going to share with the audience a bit more about who you are and what you do. Let's start with Pete. Pete began a deeply transformational and awakening relationship with breath, awareness, presence and pain after a series of injuries and life experiences that began at age five in 1973. In 1992, a nervous breakdown started a series of awakenings that led him to explore the nature of sexual energy and emotional and physical suffering. He started training in various breath, energy, touch and awareness based practices and therapies and had a deep calling to share his discoveries. He quickly absorbed the teachings and wisdoms from whatever he studied and during sessions and meditation he was shown techniques and teachings from beyond his current understanding. This became a potent synergy and his sessions and trainings became more and more mystical and transformational. He taught thousands of students in Reiki between 1994 and 2012. In one-to-one sessions, Pete worked with clients in a healing, coaching and teaching capacity on the themes of breath, vitality, sexuality, spirituality and emotional alchemy. He facilitates groups in workshops and retreats in a variety of subjects from sexual healing, vibrant living, breathwork and spiritual awakening. Now let's share a little bit about Kalindi. Kalindi is an inspirational group facilitator and therapist working in the field of intimacy, coaching, sexual healing, conscious relationships, yoni healing and sacred sexuality. Assisting couples and individuals to bring deep love, respect and transformation into their relationships. Kalindi has spent 30 years exploring her own and other people's energy. Her profound understanding of the human energy system, psychology and sexual nature comes from her study and practice in Taoism. I hope I've said that okay. (laughs) Tantra, Vedic mysticism, bodywork, trauma work and being present with life as it unfolds. She is the creator of the Central Mastery Journey and she and Pete work together in running workshops and programs for couples and individuals in Tantra, sacred sexuality, emotional intelligence and conscious relationships. This includes an online couples intimacy program called Amrita Tantra which teaches couples how to nourish and transform every aspect of a relationship. How deep and profound. Wow, (laughs) wow, wow, wow. Now, a lot of what I have said there will be very new to people, some of the terminologies and some of your practices. And what will be really wonderful for us to know is some of the key highlights that Mm. led you to doing what you're doing and also know how you came together and how you came together (laughs) as a couple. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I was thinking about this and I was thinking I think some of my key highlights in my life that's drawn me to do the to do what I do is actually started in my teenage years where as a teenager I was so um curious about people's inner workings like what were people thinking what were people feeling what I wanted to understand what does this body feel like? What's this body do? What What's their body doing? So I think for me, I was a very curious teenager about 
um, how sexuality worked and how how connecting worked. So for me, I think it started with this curiosity mm. in my life. And from that, I was very good at asking questions, you know, exploring, seeking things, finding things out. And I, so I think my highlights in my life have been situated in curiosity being in curiosity and going you know when we look at things and we uh get told we get told something yes. um about our bodies or we get told a concept I'm very been very much a person that's like okay well I'm gonna go and see if I can feel that concept can yeah. I find out what that concept is in my yeah. own body so I mean, yeah. that's the first one that came to mind. I mean, share, share something of yours, Pete. Mm. <laughs> that's the one that first well, I mean, came to mind. I came to my work from a completely opposite end. Oh, yeah, this is with of, the opposites. <laughs> we, we, we are incredibly polar opposite in many ways and mm. also incredibly aligned in some ways. Yeah. Kalindi came from the, from the kind of ecstasy point of view with um, always being in touch with um, the ecstasy in her body, even from a, from a tiny, tiny one. Um, and I came from pain, you know, mm. I, I, I came from a series of injuries. Um, and then what my mind did with a lot of that was, um, make me broken inside or created this concept that I was broken. And so that followed me through my life. And I, I, I went through my life, um, incredibly, I was circumcised when I was five and I was the only person who was circumcised in my school. And so I was laughed at in the changing rooms. Yeah. Um, and I took on all of these really negative patterns and beliefs um, about myself and about my genitals and about um, about sex um, and became incredibly frightened of, of uh, my sexuality. Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of pushed me to a point where I, where I ended up having a breakdown, you know. Um, and within having a breakdown, um, it was actually a breakthrough. It was suddenly everything that was in my head kind of fell into one big lump and it, and it just couldn't really do anything in this body anymore. And I was introduced to meditation and breath work. <clears throat> and suddenly I dropped beneath the busyness of my mind and beneath all of the stories into presence, into what I knew before my accidents, the, the, the truth of life as it is unfolding in every moment. Um, and I, I rediscovered presence again. And then that transformed everything. Suddenly, I just wanted to share that. And I learned about everything. I learned about all the, all the pieces of my, of my seeming brokenness um, and transformed each area and aspect. And as I transformed them and healed them in myself, I just wanted to share that with everybody, you know, share it with everybody who, who else was in that position. Um, mm -hmm. And and that's that's led me on an incredibly rich and delicious journey. So and painful journey, but um, yeah, yeah. yeah. And if it's okay with you, then I would like to just explore what both of you have shared. So, Kalindi, your exploration of curiosity, and I love that word, curiosity, that you use mm -hmm. there. Would you say that through your journey of curiosity, that there were some advantages and disadvantages to having that level of curiosity and what did you face and encounter yeah definitely I mean I think the plus side of being very curious in my life means that I've learned a lot of learned a lot about myself mm -hmm. learned a lot about the dynamics within people's relating so not just sexual relationships but how people relate like understanding watching witnessing but I think also I've stepped into situations where luckily for myself, I was never hurt. Mm -hmm. But looking back, there were definitely positions where I could have been. I could have put myself, I was definitely in positions where I could have been a lot worse could have happened through yeah. the curiosity for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like I was lucky enough to kind of skirt through and navigate those challenging times um and i guess i guess as a young woman there was a definite naivety i think because like pete was saying like i think i came more from the viewpoint of viewing the world through a sort of blissful lens mm. like i would feel a lot of pleasure in my body so i and in a way i it, 
that's why I work with pleasure because I yeah. have a good access to pleasure. Mm. And in my 20s, I ended up living in um, a community which was a meditation community for about four and a half years where we did a lot of movement of energy and working with the realm of devotion to life. So being in devotion of life. So I think for me, I came from a, a space of um, this kind of inner union with something that's very peaceful, very connected. But I think also my realm of um, getting in the curiosity of life, I've also got to witness especially over the years of working with sexual healing, the amount of trauma and pain and um, disconnection that mm -hmm. is happening in society as well. So yeah. it's, in, it's led me down all different pathways for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, thank you for that share. Mm -hmm. And for Pete, when you were speaking about meditation and how you were able to fall in and really just transmute some of that energy that you had and some of the pain, some of the suffering that you're experiencing. Out of curiosity, out of my curiosity as well, and I'm sure for the audience, what were the type of energies that you were dealing with and what did they turn into? What kind of emotions were coming up for you during those meditation sessions? Yeah, well, the <clears throat> I think the most profound thing that I discovered was um, there was a lot of terror. There was a lot of fear in my body. And I realised that... Um, fear and excitement are the same energy, um, but they're just seen from a different viewpoint. Mm. Um, and when I learned to um, move from this this place of so if, if, if you have these two viewpoints, you've got one that is completely receiving. So so um, excitement, you're in receiving of it. Mm -hmm. you, you kind of you welcome it, you enjoy it, you take it in and you amplify it through through your intention. Um, but fear, you tend to push it away and you tend to kind of um, separate yourself from it. But if you just do the opposite and just welcome it and breathe it in and take it in and become curious, fascinated mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the sensations, sensation is only ever life. So if you become fascinated with the sensations and find what it does in you, you know, yeah. and if there's resistance to doing it, then you become fascinated with the resistance. That's yeah. energy. That's life take that in and then there may be resistance to that and resistance to that and you track yourself all the way back until you're in a place of freedom and deep mm -hmm. enjoyment of everything that there is and that transformed absolutely everything and I still use it every day yeah. every day yeah. mm. Mm. that's such a wonderful way to transform that energy as you're saying there into that fascination into that mm -hmm. curiosity and to welcome it that's such a reframe of that position to be able to do and now so what brought you together how did you come together as a couple <laughs> uh, we were both in a place that we didn't ever expect to be in first of all we were both okay. in Goa, you know we, um, we've both been to india before um and we'd heard that goa was quite a hedonistic place and, and it wasn't really somewhere that we were interested in but kalindi had to go there to um take her son to uh, to meet her ex-husband Mm -hmm. And I had to go there to pick up my son from my ex-partner. Okay. Um, and we just bumped into each other on we the were, beach. We were actually swimming in the ocean. Yeah, I chatted her up <laughs> in the ocean. Yeah. Yeah, he was just um, swimming across to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, it turned out that I was on the beach with my ex-husband and his new partner. Okay. And, and it, I knew, I, I know his, his, um, her her, her. <laughs> his her um, <laughs> and 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 also Kalindi had been given somebody's phone number when she was in Goa just in case she needed some support and that yes. was my ex wow I know wow wow yeah. wow and we we there was lots of it was very synchronistic yeah we had um, lots of beautiful things yeah. happen and we actually had a had our first date at a Prem Joshua gig on a full moon on the beach and it was just magnificent absolutely Really we had beautiful. we had very it was very magical and I think partly because both of us mm. have done a lot of meditation and steeped in the sort of mysticism of life mm. and I think when we came together that that was kind of the building of it really it was watching the alchemy of being able to just soften into each other's presence and we would sometimes just 
in our playfulness because we're very playful but also just be able to stop and be quiet and listen and feel and walk along beaches and just be in each other's presence from early on without having to kind of fill it or try and be something that we weren't there was something very um yeah and it was incredibly cosmic I mean, my goodness, <laughs> but ju just being in each other's presence kind of amplified our, our kind of psychic abilities and all sorts of things. And we just started talking and talking and talking and and our love making became like super cosmic. Um, yeah. And then one day we were sitting across um, having dinner and we were, we were looking into each other's eyes, talking about um, what we are, what our idea for our future is um, not together because we, we weren't actually together at that point. <clears throat> And then suddenly the veils dropped away completely and we just saw each other as as spirit, as being. Um, and we recognised each other and we both said, oh, it's you. Oh, it's you at the same time. <laughs> and it was the most incredible something. Yeah. Remembrance. And oh. and that's with me always, yeah. you know. Mm. And I can that was 16 years ago. Yeah. 16 years ago. And I'm just really soaking that in because it was so synchronized. You can't make that up, can you? No, like no, no. in a different country, in a very busy place as yeah. well. And yet the connection no. came. So it was absolutely, I think, you know, divinely orchestrated that you guys were due to come together. And you both have spoken about meditation and how transformational that has been for you and how you use it for your clients. Now, do you, or couples, do you promote individual meditation and couple meditation? How does that work yeah. um, in terms of what you do? Yeah, I think I think it's a good thing to sort of also explain what I guess we also might mean by meditation. Yes, please. Because I think sometimes people can think of meditation as a sort of sitting black straight, you know, lotus position. Mm. Um but actually meditation is um, to be focused, to be in relationship with. And so meditation, again, I think is something everybody does, whether they label it meditation. And I think in the realm of relationship, it's about this sense of, um, like, for example, if I am with Pete now, and we could call this a meditation, but really it's a sense of presencing. So, for example, he's got his arm around me and he's got his hand on my back. Yes. And so I could I could be really focused on the screen with you. But actually, part of my focus is leaning into the back of my body. So I stay present with my body. Mm. When I'm present with my body, I get to feel the relationship of the reality of my experience. So while I'm talking with you, actually a big priority of mine is feeling Pete's hand on my back, myself sitting in the chair, my breath in my body, feeling my feet on the floor, feeling the clothes on my skin. So even though I don't look like I'm meditating in the typical classic sense, there's a sense of I am with the pleasure in my body. And if I stay with that throughout my day, and my beloved Pete comes towards me and wants to touch me or connect with me, I'm already there. He mm. hasn't got to try and get me there. I don't have to try and get there to be there. So meditation is um, really a sense of presencing. And again, curiosity, you know, curiosity is a huge piece for, for both of us. You know, mm. if, if you're not curious with what is happening right now, then you're missing out, you know, because there's, the magic of life happening in this body right now yes yes i really love that explanation because i do think there's a lot of pressure on us to dedicate that 5 10 15 minutes a day to sit down in that quiet place meditate to block out your thoughts you know there's a lot of pressure on what meditation would look like and as you say the power of presence and curiosity awareness i would say isn't it it's like this um yeah sensational awareness like really tap into your senses because as you say you, you're listening to me so you've got the auditory system going on but then also you've got the power of touch you can yeah. feel Pete touching your back and it's being aware and being present what would you say then are some of the key challenges that you find that block people from having that focus and that presence 
Well, I would say busyness. You know, people just get busy and they they believe their thoughts and they prioritize their thoughts. Mm. Um, just because a thought comes into your mind doesn't mean it's true. You know, we don't challenge our thoughts. Mm. Uh, we don't challenge um, our old beliefs or anything like that. And actually, a lot of a lot of our beliefs are have come from elsewhere. They've come from other people and yeah. they're not relevant for us now. Mm. So. And one of the things with with purely sitting with yourself or with someone else um, and just just noticing the thoughts and just questioning, is this real for me? You know, is this real for me? And then you just feel what happens in the body and that starts to inform you. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the things that I and we both notice when we're working with couples mm -hmm. is um, often often people are working in climates which are much more focused in the mind like we have to think 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 get things done computer mm. all of that kind of thing and what a lot of couples um find hard is to then when they get home to come into into that relational feel with their partner or their kids or that sense and so what a lot of what we talk about and work with couples is about transitions the yeah. transition between um, something that's a little bit more heady, like sitting on the computer doing admin, doing all the sort of work that we might do. or And so this transition between that part of our world and the transition into our love relationship. So I, I'm a real advocate, again, of this sense of, for example, a transition when somebody is driving home from, from work, they park outside their house, that sense of just taking some moments to go, am I with my body? Mm. Am I feeling? Even just five minutes of just breathing, just arriving and noticing and clocking that transition mm. that I'm now going from an aspect of my personality, an aspect of who I show up at work as, yeah. to now I'm transitioning to my my beloved or my home life or whatever that is this is a different way of being this is much more they need on sense of our emotional body our nervous system regulation yes. and so there's this importance between again this being present to consciously transition mm. to into the presence of our beloved yes. and one of the things that i do is if I've if I've come from a, a, a day that's been heavy or stressful or anything like that, uh, before I come in, it's like I imagining I imagine taking off um, the clothes, the energy of that whole something, leaving that at the door and stepping into a new moment, and then coming to meet Kalindi and step up and bringing this this new, not carrying the old. Yes. into this into this moment, but bringing a new freshness in there and seeing Kalindi as fresh and new. And I mean, that's another thing that happens in relationship. People don't see each other as fresh and new. They tend to see each other as the patterns that they know each other to be, yes. which is not who they are at all. They mm. are fresh moment, every moment, fresh life. Oh, I love that. And when you were talking now, I just thought about, you know, for seeing somebody as fresh and new, is that curiosity? We're going to keep, I think, coming back to that word <laughs> curiosity, yeah. isn't it? And fascination is like, what can I discover about my partner today? You know, yeah. what newness can I see? Yeah. What and and how can I embrace that? It's just asking ourselves those questions that you have that. It's exciting. Yeah. It's that kind of that, that fear and excitement that you spoke about before, Pete. It's like, you know, how can we become excited and alive with our relationship, with our connection? Mm -hmm. And also what I'm hearing here is actually the intentionality behind being in your body. Yeah. It's yeah. And I think there's a lot of mindset work that we can talk about, you know, in terms of, you know, thinking differently, exploring our emotions. But equally, the mind-body connection is mm. so powerful. And we can often forget about the body as well. We yeah. go straight to the mind. Well, as you're saying, take that step and there's feelings, you know, how am I feeling that? Do some yeah. breath work, you know, where, where are the sensations in my body? And really explore that. And I don't think that necessarily we have enough exploration particularly in a relationship as a couple yes. and especially in intimacy you know i mean yes. people don't explore intimacy as um just 
a moment to moment exploration. Mm. People often experience intimacy as a goal oriented orientated something, you know, like sex. They will they yes. will they they do X, Y and Z to get someone there and to get myself there and so on. And a lot of it, a lot of it happens in the head. Yeah. Um, a lot of it happens in in fantasy. Um, mm. A lot of it happens in 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 these goals that we, that we want to make happen. Um, yes. And that cuts us away from the intimacy of what is actually showing up in this moment. Mm. And what is influencing those goals? Would you say that it's society and, for example, maybe you people watching porn, and those various things like that in which they have this artificial idea of what intimacy looks like? What is influencing people from actually really just being in the, in the moment and having their own individual goals? I think first it's good to say that I think what I've noticed about intimacy is that it takes a level of vulnerability to show up with somebody in intimacy mm -hmm. because it's where some of those, like you were saying, some of those outfits that we have to wear in the world are shed, where we're showing up with more of our deeper sense of how we feel and what we feel about ourselves shows up in intimacy. Mm. And so I think a big part of it is that um, we can get caught in jumping, jumping into a doing, and we miss the being, because somewhere in the being, we might reveal some of those deeper kind of, I'm going to use the word echelons, because it sounds good. I think it's the right word. Mm. <laughs> it sounds good. But like deeper layers of ourselves to another. And so I think often what that goal, ju jumping over the intimacy into the doing of sex is just to, to escape vulnerability is part of it, for sure. And there yeah. is a huge amount of pressure um, on people to perform, you know, um, or people believe there is a huge amount of pressure mm. to perform. Actually, if people came in vulnerability and in really deep intimacy, then that actually would be enough. That would be enough. But because both people have got ideas and fears around what a sexual person is and does and how they are, you know, and what they should be like. Um, and that comes from all, I mean, that comes from, from our history, from our traditions, from society, from, from everywhere. Um, we're constantly drip fed stuff through the media through everything um we're not we don't have a good sex education so our sex education we um, we learn at school between we hear the the big boys or the big girls talking about sex and stuff in a in a in a way that is is not real and true you know there is there is no real sex education um mm. in schools uh, I and mean, one of the things that Kalindi and I did um for a few years running was at a at a camp we took on the teenage area for a while and we had 60 teens and within being the kind of the parents for these 60 teens, we taught sacred sexuality and opened up a, a, a circle where people could just ask questions and and be vulnerable and yeah. listen to each other. And and the, the boys shared what their vulnerabilities were and the girls shared what their vulnerabilities were. And it was so incredibly transformational. You know, mm -hmm. and it's something that should be there in the schools, but it wouldn't work in schools because when kids are in in schools with each other all the time, if you share something vulnerable, then that's not necessarily a safe place because kids then learn to use that information against each other and so on and so forth. So it's it's yeah, it's it's sad. It does yeah. work in some other countries, you know, Finland and places like that. They mm -hmm. teach sex education from the age of eight. Um, there's no um yeah that there's there's no stigma around it they don't have the emotions in them and the, the hormones in them when they're teaching so they learn it and then yeah. kind of and then they grow up and yeah it's a very different thing yeah it's very interesting because i have a, a, a daughter and she's seven years old and at that school um uh, when the, uh, she's currently incontinent as well so she gets changed um by her school teachers and they were said that they are very descriptive about body parts so they won't use words like flower for example, to describe the vagina area, they would actually use the word. And at first I was like, oh, 
<laughs> you know, oh, I like to use the word flower or oh, let's uh, wipe your ghoulies, you know, something like that. You don't actually say the term, but the education behind it is very important. And I do agree, but it is about creating that safe space in order mm. to explore that as well. Mm. When you were talking there, um, Pete and Kalindi, and you were talking about the relationships and that vulnerability and having that space, what do you find are some of the common desires when it comes to you know, sex and intimacy that people crave and aren't necessarily receiving from their partner? And is there any difference between the genders too? Two questions, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, um, <very> <laughs> actually, something that comes up a lot in my work is a lot of it's also is about quality of touch actually which is quality of presence yeah which is so a lot of themes is it, you know maybe if I'm, I'm working with women they come to me and they're like oh how can I get my partner to uh, touch me in a better way yes. like it's not really fulfilling or it feels like they're following a a, a, a kind of a pattern they stroke here they tweak here they tweak there and that's their that's all they do it's like they've got into a rut and that's how they do sex okay and so that's often quite a theme is that people don't quite know how to diversify out of what they think works and of course it will work sometimes but like we were saying we're always fresh and new mm -hmm. our body is open to certain things in different moments and so a big part of it is teaching couples how to create curiosity but how to create the fresh and newness and I think this is again where an awkwardness can come in where it's this sense of um oh if I don't do this routine yes I'm now going to be a little bit vulnerable because I don't really know if this is going to work or if this is going to be good or and so that's where we then avoid this this play of freshness okay. um so that comes up quite a lot. It's like, how do we create something more diverse in the way that we make love? That's a lot of what couples come for. And there's a lot of a, a lot of people speak say that, that that there's very little communication in yeah. their intimacy, you know. And so there's very little feedback. And so it's guesswork, you know. Um, yeah. And and we so for intimacy to work, we need we need connection, we need fascination, we need presence, um, and we need communication really yes. clear communication yeah. okay and during the experience that communication you would say so that you can guide your partner to a degree yeah. yeah yeah i mean yeah. it can get too it can get too much you know you can you, <laughs> you 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 play between okay now do this do this do this that doesn't really work either um although because this is a whole playing field people people might take making love really seriously and it's actually play we are yeah. playing with intimacy. We're playing um, with our own energy and with each other's energy. And we're seeing what happens when I do this? What happens when I do this? And if we take it with that curiosity um, and we play with each other in that way, then we're not trying to do sex right. You yes. know? It's yes. a very different, very different field of, of exploration. Yeah. And when we were having a discussion before we actually had this episode that we're talking here, we spoke about the polarity um, within ourselves and how that can have a bit of a play when it comes to sexuality and when it comes to intimacy. Would you be able to explain a little bit more about that and how that shows up? Mm, polarity. Mm, like polarity and like, like yeah. the genders and yeah. 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 I mean, I think I mean, definitely there is... It's a tricky thing, genders, because we can kind of go, I think we'd have to talk about it in generalizations, because mm -hmm. I think I'm hoping that we're coming into a time where it's it's more about the sense of we're more similar than we are different, mm -hmm. actually. Of course, we all have sensations, we all have emotions, we all have thoughts, we all have feelings, we all have desires, you know, and of course... I think society makes us very much um, cultivates aspects of what we perceive as 
a, ma a man or a woman. So there's a lot of stories about what makes a man and a woman. Before, and so there's all that to name as well. But of course, from a sort of chemical point of view, there's a sense of where the hormones are balanced, testosterone, estrogen, all of that. We've got to remember that underneath all this um, creation that humanity's made, that we are still animals underneath. We have instinct and we have a kind of chemical impulse to mate, as it were, that's still in there in our bodies. Um, so my sense is that actually what I find when working with couples is it's becoming less fixed. So we might have this idea that, you know, the classic is that men want it a little much more sexy or kinky or that sort of style and women want it soft, soft and opening and gentle. But actually, you know, those, those sort of stereotypes, I don't really see that much. What I see is a much more blend of um, people starting to realize they can really own their sexual desires you know, and that there's a freeing up, especially because I work a lot with women, especially an opening up of women to start to own, actually, I'm this kind of style of sexuality. I actually really like having multiple partners or I really like having a bit more sort of edgy sexual experience. And then I'm also finding that a lot of men are also going, actually, I really like it when it's much more soft and energetic. Mm -hmm. And so I'm... I've been working in this field for 14 years and I've really seen a change of permission actually between what we would call genders. So yes. I think it's, I think there's a lot of permission going on in the world of sexuality and relationship. And I, um, there, I think there's some shadow aspects that are coming up, which I think is natural in humanity. And I think there's a lot of positivity coming from, that opening up to looking at oneself mm. as a holistic being rather than I should be a certain way because of my gender for sure yeah and we both have we all have both poles you know we have masculine and feminine poles um and we when we when we kind of master ourselves we can play in between um, yeah. And with, within relationship we can do that together you know mm. and and sometimes it's really really um, incredible when I'm in my masculine and Kalindi's in her masculine you know mm. and sometimes it's really incredible when she's in her masculine and I'm in my feminine you know and I'm much more soft and receiving mm. and 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 sometimes it's I mean it's a play um, but but it, 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 it yeah but and it takes communication you know to say actually this is this is where I am in this moment can maybe can we play here you know mm. how does how would that work for you yeah. And then you have a, an honest, open dialogue. And without that, it's guesswork, mm -hmm. you know, and guesswork is is never, never satisfying. Mm, yeah. Communication is so powerful when it comes to that that connection piece. And so mm. that there isn't that guesswork. And when I, you were talking there, Kalindi, as well, and you spoke about, you know, working with women, I know that the um, a lot of my audience are actually women who listen to this show as well. Do you find that they highlight to you any key aspect that can help them to feel safe when it comes to sex and intimacy? Yeah, there's lots of things, because I think when we were talking earlier about sort of transitions and things, what was coming to my mind was it's all about building safety. Yes. Because for any of us, actually, um, when we're feeling slightly unsafe, we have low level adrenaline in the body. And when there's adrenaline in the body, we it uh, there isn't so much oxytocin in the body. And what we need to come into intimacy and lovemaking is an oxytocin field, what field of chemicals in the body. And that comes from a sense of connection and safety. And so it's really key to good sexual intimacy, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of ways in which and in, in which I teach is the first thing is always self-safety. Like, where am I abandoning myself? So this sense of, am I so far removed from my body that I can't really hear what my body needs? Mm -hmm. And therefore, when my, my body's going to feel unsafe because someone's going to come along and want something from me and I'm not here to be an advocate for it. 
And that's kind of in our subconscious. So it's very much about how do we center ourselves in our nervous system, in our body? How do we, are we connected enough to feel our yes and no? And then this sense of that's where we start. I'm, I'm, my saying is um, like, we are our primary lover. Mm. So first we have to be the lover of ourself. So am I here with myself? Am I a lover today with myself? And so that's the beginning start of that. Mm -hmm. And then within the safety, in a way, what we really need from our partners is also them to be in their sense of safety mm -hmm. in themselves. Because our nervous systems talk to each other. They regulate. They regulate. Or dysregulate. Or they depends. dysregulate or regulate. And so if Pete's off center in himself, for example, that's going to sort of almost like ag agitate the field. Yeah. The relation field mm. and if i'm not deeply centered i could then get lifted into that unsettled mm. nature and then we both feel unsafe and then we might try and connect and then we're just yes. in some kind and then that's a more superficial kind of connection and so that's mm. when couples find that they end up they're like oh we started off trying with intimacy and then we end up with an argument mm. yeah. because yeah. because couples often need to co-regulate and so it starts with this self-regulation but then also what a lot of women say to me is that they it's the presence that they're looking for mm -hmm. and it's also this sense of um fluidity it not being so fixed the expectation of having to show up a certain way because i think mm -hmm. for all the women listening uh, it might be fair to say on others generally is that we're very, um, we're so multifaceted. And of course, men are also, but we're I'm just talking in terms of women, we're so multifaceted. We all feel so many different things, so many different feelings, and we're going to show up in so many different ways. Mm. And I think there's a need to be met just as we are, mm. from where we are without expectation of having to be a certain way. Let's start there. And then it might grow into some wild swinging from chandeliers sexual experience yeah um, and that comes with having a conversation at the beginning you know hey how are you doing where are you what are your needs right now you know yes. and yeah. and then you can both kind of sit with that you let that land in your bodies and then see where that where life wants to take you yeah. you know rather than coming in with agendas of i want to do this and i want to do this and um because then the agendas get in the way and you kind of and the people aren't even really present with that. Yeah. You're in a doing think, rather than a being. Yeah. And a few things were coming up for me when you were talking there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Firstly, the skin to skin contact when a baby and a mother and that regulation that you yeah. can get. And I would actually, well, I'm not the expert when it comes here, but it just feels like there could be some power behind that skin to skin contact with simply just being and that breath work when you can feel each other and you can feel the the regulation between the couple. When you were talking to Kalindi, I was just thinking of that oxytocin that can come between also the mother and Absolutely. the child. And also they encourage the father and, and the baby to have that skin to skin contact yeah. too. Yeah. So I can see how that could transition, you know, yeah. into our adult relationships too. Yeah. yeah. It, so. it takes letting go of the story of where you want to go. You know, it takes being super curious with what is here, being really, really deeply present with each other and just loving this moment of connection with each other yeah. and giving yourself completely to that so that then the new shows up in your awareness. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we when teach you... all sorts of different things like this in our in in our programs and our. our we used to do a massage for lovers um, retreat, um, which we're we're going to relaunch at some point, and it was teaching all sorts of beautiful ways of, of touching each other and stuff, and and some of it is just literally, where are you inside of yourself when you're touching your beloved. Are you in here, what or what is your intention? What are, and, and we can put so many different flavors into yeah. intention, yeah. or we can just be completely listening. You know, so we can we can touch each other in so many different ways and then really reflecting on when I'm, when I'm making love, am I am I really exploring or am I just doing what I know? Yes. You know? Yeah. 
that curiosity again, that playfulness, and even asking yeah. your lover, partner, and how does that feel? For you? Yeah, you know, yeah. during those moments, is getting that feedback. And yeah. when you were talking there, Pete, and you were talking about the agendas, and I can imagine there's a lot of individual agendas that people have when it comes to lovemaking, but then also having that common intention, like mm-hmm. what do we as a couple want to yeah. achieve from that? There must be some value behind having that common intention too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I feel like... Um... One of the things that we share a lot is also with with couples is to get clear on what is your relationship ethos, like what is the what is the flavor as you become because when you become a relationship, there's a there's something that's formed which is the relationship. It's like a third quality, a third energy, mm-hmm. and it's like what is the ethos of that? When we drink of the relationship, what is it that each couple wants to feel? what do you want to feel from being in relationship is it adventure is it like um newness is it sort of soft home safety like what are the flavors that you want to drink from that relationship and it's the same with our our sexual relating what are the flavors that you want to put in that mix and so there's a I really invite couples to play with that and maybe we can't fulfill some of them with our partner Mm. we don't want to and that's okay but it's this sense of let's just sort of put in the pot what are the things that you would love to be experiencing through intimacy and sexual relating and let's be playful and curious around um you know all I feel a bit awkward but I quite like to share this with you or I feel a bit awkward but I'd love to do this one day or I'd love to try that one day or Mm. you know and then that's when couples can start to go oh actually I didn't know you might like to play with this let's try that we 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 often talk talk about a relationship being like a garden and we need to um water our garden we need to feed our garden we need to weed our garden um and So what you put into, so I I am myself, I have my energy field. Kalindi is herself, she has her energy field. We come together, we have a collective energy field. What do we want to build within this relationship, within this energy field? Mm. What qualities do we want to really enhance? Um, And what gets in the way? And what can we do about that? And And we consciously look at what's getting in the way and what we can do about that together and individually. Mm. Building the conscious relationship. That's what it yeah. sounds like building and actually nourishing and nurturing. Yeah, and really aligning with the love in it, yeah. you know. Yeah, uh, the power of love. The power I of would love. love to understand a little bit more about Tantra and maybe our audience too would love to and Rita Tantra as well. And yeah, can you just explain a little bit more about, firstly, what is Tantra and also your <laughs> programme <laughs> for those who are listening? So uh, this is, I I mean, Tantra probably, maybe people would describe it in different ways Mm. because there's a lot of different ways of looking at it. But I think for me, Tantra is an awareness. It's a state of being. So Tantra is like the sense of, as if I I was going to throw a pebble into a pond and when that pebble hits the water and the ripples that come out of that pebble, so Tantra is an awareness of the ripple effect. It's, an, it's the weaving of together of all things. It's the noticing. It's to be in, in attention, in awareness, in the awareness of your words, your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, the ripple effect of that on others, but also the ripple effect on others on you. And it's a, listen, it's a very, very deep listening to the way that life is created on all its levels, from its physicality to its energetic and all the levels of that and being curious about that and um, being conscious about how you show up in that weave and how you want to show up and how you listen. That's how I would describe tantra. Yeah, for me, it's like life is the divine relationship. You know, um, I am in relationship with everything, with everything and with everyone. Um, everybody is in relationship with everything that comes into their awareness, you know. Um, and how do I meet this? How do I show up with this? How do I let this nourish me? Where do I pull away? Where do I open up to? 
and then noticing where I pull away and seeing whether that's something because it's fear led or whether it's because it's just something that's not not um, in attraction with me, you know. And so it's 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 living this relationship with life and really tuning into the utter holiness of this, because, oh, my God, this moment when we really open up and receive and just let this be magnificent, then, oh, my goodness, the depths of beauty we can open up to inside of ourselves is something else. And then when we do that with another it's not like I'm receiving Kalindi's love. It's that I am opening myself up to be loved and I'm showing myself more and I'm loving this divine more. And then her love amplifies that. You know, it's just exquisite. You know? It just sounds so free. And I'm just listening to both of you. I'm like, how free and liberating is that experience? Yeah, and just allowing for everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everybody in every moment. But because we stay in the busyness, you know, yeah. in the mind, we tend to just forget it or we try and do it and we can't do it. Mm -hmm. This is there once the doing stops. Yeah. You know? I mean, this is there all the time. But as long as we've got our awareness on the doing, yeah. we, we miss it. Mm -hmm. Mr. Being. So it can be very like carving out that time. I think during this episode, what we have spoke about is the power of intentionality and carving out mm. that time to be present. Mm. And it will take practice. This yeah, can be completely yeah. new to some people yeah. in terms of being, not doing, carving out time. You know, before I go into the house, how am I going to navigate that transition? You know, all of these things that are showing up, it will take practice. But with practice, it becomes second nature. And I think you can fully embrace the, the, the wholeness of being as well yeah. i would say um we we use the word we use the word practice but actually what what happens is when we say practice people suddenly get this idea that there's something that you're doing right or wrong you've got to get it right you've got to improve it so what we say is just just play with it whenever you remember play with it you know explore it play and explore and see what comes Mm, I love that you know uh, the power of our words is so important as well yeah. uh, and we know that so even the reframe of using the word practice to play exploration with it it opens it creates that space I suppose isn't it when you think no no I'm going to go in I'm, I'm going to go off on one um, when you think about the word practice you do think as you said like there's some very final there's right or wrong there's an outcome isn't it yeah. like it's an outcome for that but really exploration allows for possibilities mm -hmm. and you just using that word it's just triggered something in me so thank you for <laughs> for that shit nobody get that aha oh, moment You're like oh yes mm -hmm. <laughs> it makes me think about a question that I often ask couples to ponder which is why do you have sex like mm -hmm. why mm -hmm. Yeah. And actually, the answers to that is often very different at different phases of people's life, different ages, different moments in time. And I think there's something about when you sit and feel into that, it's something um, <sighs> opens up around what is then the end goal? Is it sometimes it might be I just want pure raucous pleasure. Ah, oh, great. Mm. Or it might be. I just want really deep connection. And so it's like, what is it for? What is the act taking you to feel? What is the feeling that you're looking for underneath the act? That's yeah. a really powerful question because we need that clarity um, yeah. in order to be able to know, you know, what is that, what are we striving to achieve from that? Yeah. And, and then we can communicate that to our partner. Yeah, as well because yeah. we need to get clear on what it is that we want what's the goal so that you can feed that back to yeah, your and that that changes moment to moment because um in in some of the touch um explorations that we teach um <clears throat> someone can be touching someone and in their body the receiver it can be no not for now Th that particular touch is, is is not what i'm looking for yeah. um but that only means for that moment that touch might work in two minutes time you know, but what often we do is we hear a no and we think that's a no for life, you know, but and we don't ever question it again. And we've built up layers upon layers of all of these different assumptions, which aren't necessarily true. Mm. And it sounds like this is something that you teach in your program. Would I be assuming correctly 
by, yeah, by yeah. saying that yeah, as well. Yeah. So um, tell us a little bit more about the Amrita Kandra program that you do mm-hmm. and what could couples expect should they sign up and join? Okay. I mean, something to add about Tantra is it's also, it's, I think with Tantra, often people think of it just about mm-hmm. sexuality, but mm-hmm. it is a way of being that includes sexuality. And it uses our sexual energy as a as a medium to reach those deeper connections in life, which we, we might call divine connection mm. uh, or like can't be connected with the hum of life, the hum of the universe, whatever that might be for people. Um, so in the program, it's a range of communication practices, how to deepen communication and especially through the body, through the nervous system, mm. how to find that what we were saying, that sense of safety together how to embody safety inside yourself together how to regulate um, yourself and each other you know what what to do when when things kick off you know that there are there are very key incredibly simple pieces that we can do that just undo that energy you Mm -hmm. know so we explore some of that um we explore we explore all sorts of touch things so we explore touch around touch We explore how to open up to your desires together in relationship. Um, We work with pleasure. We work with some energetic practices. So we we work with physical practices within lovemaking, but also energetic practices within lovemaking, Mm. all held with a container of how do you communicate and create 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 good sexual vitality from safety connection that will grow into whatever kind of play that you're looking for i mean a, a lot of what we teach is is micro practices that can all be added in as and when peppered throughout the life and throughout the day um and because yes. intimacy isn't just about when you're together mm-hmm. you know um yeah. we can we can build on our relationship um yeah. when we're apart yeah know? But people don't necessarily seem to know that, you know. Mm, so yeah. and what, what we've done is we've basically distilled all of the things that we love about relationship and all of the things that we've found that has helped us within our relationship. And we've we've done we've kind of, yeah, we've squished them down into a really yummy thing. I mean, there's even that things like the intimate massage. We do one of the sessions on intimate massage where we um we have models who we who we've demonstrated on. And that's that can be an incredibly I mean people it's a really big eye opener for some people because they've never actually been taught what and where and how you can touch people. Yeah. It's never stop learning. Yeah. Mm. That's what I, I mean, said. that was a key. Never yes. stop learning. We never, never stop learning learn. about all sorts. Never stop learning. If you want to learn the violin, you go and have lessons. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want to learn maths, you have a tutor. Yeah. People don't know that improving your intimacy and your sex, you need to go somewhere to actually learn that, or else you just stay going around and around and around. Yeah. And if you just ask your friends and stuff, then. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a lot of Chinese whispers get passed around, yeah. you know, but yeah. actually there are people who can really, really help, who really, really know yeah. um, what works within relationships. Like yourselves, like yeah. us, there's, it's, a, it's yeah. exciting. And it's a really empowering time where people can take responsibility and actually ask people and get some help. And learn and yeah. grow. Yes, learn and grow. And actually, I think a key thing that you um, I was picking up on during our conversation was the act of taking responsibility. Now, taking that, the self-love, I feel, is self-responsibility. And then we can actually just take that and transition that into our relationships. Yeah. And when you were talking there, Pete, about you know peppering the day with you know, intimacy and how you can do that and how you're sharing the beautiful aspects that have worked for you both with the couples that you work with, I thought it'd be a lovely way for us to transition into your personal definition of love because I do love to ask my my guests this so how do you define love for yourself Pete and for yourself Kalindi okay that's always an interesting one you know I mean (laughs) for me I my perception is that love is love is the energy that I feel in my heart um when I drop into quietness um and just really, really feel into my heart, then then love is present. There is this energy, this, this well-being, this this outflowing of of um, sensation. Um, and then I 
drop into that and I fill myself with that and I drop through that and it expands throughout my whole body. Um, mm. And then I can direct that um, towards people and towards things. Um, and it feels incredibly unpersonal. It feels like it's a field of energy, a field of, of reality. Yes. Um, and yet I can make it incredibly personal and it can be incredibly delicious to make it personal, mm -hmm. you know, and then to direct it to someone. So, oh, so beautiful. And when you were talking now, I just had that ripple of visualisation, like this ripple just coming outside of yourself, like this expansion. So beautiful, mm -hmm. Pete. So beautiful. Yeah. And, and it, is, it is completely separate from any judgment. There is no judgment in there at all. It's just a pure, oh, everything is a yes, 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 yes. So, yeah. And I remember you using the words um, wild and free before as well. Like mm. it was such a, a wild and free experience for you, Pete. And I think that's mm. so beautiful, so yeah. beautiful. And Kalindi, your, your personal oh. definition. In a way, it feels kind of similar to Pete's in the mm. sense that my experience of love is through my life has been very much um, almost like a hum that just moves through me, around me, connecting me. And so I think for me, there's this sense that there's a raw, powerful love that's intrinsically inside that is like transparent, like water. It kind of has no pull towards this or that. It's just all pervasive. It kind of fills everything. It meets everything in its transparency. It's not holding the colors of different kinds of love. And then similar to what Pete was saying, the sense that then in the direction of that love, it then gets a kind of color, a flavor, like romantic love, yeah. where I might choose to have romantic love as I'm choosing with Pete. But then also I have the, the love that has a different color and a flavor towards my son and my granddaughter and, mm. you know, my friends and my families. And, you know, and it's this sense that they all have different, for me, it feels like different, that transparency is still in there, but it then has character and flavor that goes off in different directions from that transparency. So that's kind of how I would describe love. And it does. It has different flavours with whoever we are with, you know, whoever we are in contact with, we often feel love, you know, yeah. and yeah. and and the love with, it, with everybody is different, feels mm -hmm. different. We have a different sensation. We show up as a different person with every, diff every, pos every different person who we come into contact with, yes. you know. Yeah. Beautiful. So beautiful. It's a shapeshifter. Yeah. It is. And when you both were there and I just thought, it's just okay. You can feel safe in love. It's safe to love. It, it and is, letting yeah. this be enough, this moment in this heart, in these senses, letting this be enough yeah. and drinking of that and oh, letting it fulfill us means mm. we're never empty. Yeah. We're never alone. Yeah. That's beautiful. Oh, gosh, guys, this has been such a transformative, nourishing conversation i felt it and i'm so sure that the audience and the listeners are going to feel that too and have a beautiful empowering perspective on the transformative power of love connection mm -hmm. intimacy sexuality presence being i'm um, just everything that's coming to me it's just been absolutely amazing and i do have a parting tradition on this show for my guests to leave the audience. This interest just dropped so much here in this conversation. But I do have a parting tradition for my guests to leave our audience with one key takeaway to help them on their journey of love, life and relationships. Hmm. We, you want to share something? I'd I mean, I'd love to actually share a tiny little practice. Just just a little, a little, just, <laughs> just I invite you to close your eyes for a moment. Mm. and just put your awareness in your breath breath is with us mm. always and, and as you rest your awareness in your breathing just notice where your breath is happening 
I invite you to take your breath a little deeper, right down into your belly, right down into your pelvis, if you can feel it down there. And smile. And become utterly fascinated and curious with this breath as it enters and as it leaves. And as breath enters, welcome it, enjoy it, let it be beautiful. Let it fill you. So you're filling yourself with beauty, with joy, with wonder. As you breathe out, you're just breathing that out into the world. Beyond you is infinity. Infinity goes on beyond you. And when we breathe in, we can tune into a sense of infinity inside of us as well. And we breathe our smile, our joy into infinity inside us. And so there's spaciousness, infinity beyond, spaciousness, infinity inside, and breath happening. Breath is life coming and going. And there is this yes, this choosing for it to be beautiful, this moment. It is purely for you in this body. If it is in you, it is for you. So receive it and love it. Mm. And just play, play with this awareness. And staying in this, you can just open your eyes. Staying in the awareness of it, you can have your eyes open and be in this here and now with some awareness of this other going on. I mean, there are billions of chemical reactions happening in the body any moment. You know, there's so much going on that we don't put our awareness in. Wow. What a gift. What a parting gift for the audience. I feel so relaxed. I feel so calm and regulated, <laughs> extremely mm. regulated. And that as well, and I'm so glad that that was recorded as well for the audience to be able to tap back in. And I would invite you to also share that experience with your partner if you are coupled up as mm. well. And to do that, to do that breath work together as well, because that can be so regulating. Mm. Pete, thank you. Kalindi. Thank you so much. It's been Thank an honour so and much. privilege. It's been beautiful. Mm. Thank you. Speaking yeah. with you. It's been absolutely magical. Such a wonderful experience. Mm. And for everybody who has listened to this beautiful episode, I want to thank you for your time, for your attention and for your energy. And until the next episode and the start of the next season, take great care of yourself and others too. Mm. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Be sure to check out the show notes for all of the ways that you can connect with Kalindi and Pete directly.